The Nigerian Senate gets a new chief whip as Senator Ali Ndume is stripped of his privileges. The House of Representatives agrees to pay a cut as it acknowledges prevailing economic challenges. And later on the program. This is just a demonstration for the Nigerian people to understand as the people's representatives. We have always been there for them. A lawmaker, Billy Osawaru, will join us for some perspectives into matters arising. You're watching The Hallowed Chambers on TV News. I am Jesu Adeli. The Senate now has a new chief whip. He is Senator Tahir Munguno, representing Bruno North Senatorial District. The new chief whip replaces Senator Ali Ndume, who has been stripped of his title and privileges as a principal officer of the 10th Senate, following his public outburst and a founded criticism of the party and the president, who is a leader of the All Progressives Congress. The decision to replace Senator Ndume with another of his ranking colleague from Borno was the result of a letter of complaint from the leadership of the party expressing great displeasure over recent comments and conduct despite his status as a senior parliamentarian and party faithful. The Senate also did a minor reshuffle of the leadership of its committees and appointed Senator Ali Ndume as the chairman of the Committee on Tourism. Express our displeasure, our outrage, and our deep disappointment at the unbecoming, unfounded, and baseless criticism of the government and the party, the APC, by your majority whip of the Senate, Senator Ali Muhammadu Ndume, as a person who is bent on running the country down. We realize that the position of the whip of the Senate belongs to our party, distinguished Senator Mohamed Tahe Mongunu, should immediately replace distinguished Senator Alin Dume, who is bent on bringing down the country. Members of the House of Representatives have committed to giving up 50% of their salaries for a period of six months to address hunger across the country. The parliament calls on aggrieved citizens and particularly the youths to avoid protest and give the government more time to fix economic challenges of past years. Your complaint of hardship is right. But is the solution found in carrying placard and lining the streets moving that we amend that prayer to include that members sacrifice uh, maybe 50% of our salary for a period of three months or six months to help Nigerians and to show that we are in support? Anybody or every organization that is organizing protests is definitely undermining the peace and unity of our dear country. DSS has, a, has, a, has to work, must work hard to find if they can lay, at least be able to scout and get those people that are instigating or the leaders of these protests so that they can dialogue, we can dialogue with them. The Senate receives a letter from President Bola Tinubu on an executive bill to amend the 2024 Appropriation Act to allow an addition of 6.2 trillion naira to fund the Renewed Hope infrastructure projects and other critical infrastructure. The request from the President got the support of the lawmakers and scaled second reading. The total sum of 3 trillion 200 billion naira only for capital expenditure while the Finance Act 2023 Amendment Bill seeks to amend the Finance Act 2023 to impose and charge windfall tax on banks and to provide for the administration of the tax generally in the country. The bill, the two bills, uh, the first one is referred to Commission on Appropriations. 
and of course, well, let me put put them together. These two bills are referred to the Committee on Appropriations and Finance, and to report back within one week. This same request was read on the floor of the Green Chambers. My colleague Jokadza reports. A correspondence from President Bola Tenumbu requesting the approval of the House to a 6.2 trillion naira amendment to the 2024 Appropriation Act opens the day's legislative business. There was a bit of a rowdy session from the members as the House dissolved into an executive session. Back from the closed-door meeting, members lent support to the 2024 Appropriation Act Amendment Bill and a scales second reading. The bill seeks to increase the 27.5 trillion naira 2024 budget by 6.2 trillion naira. If approved, the request will increase the 2024 budget to 33.7 trillion naira. I rise to move that the bill for an act to amend the Appropriation Act 2024 and to authorize the issuance from the Consolidated Revenue Fund of the Federation, the total sum of three trillion two hundred billion naira for capital expenditure and the sum of three trillion naira only for the current expenditure for the year ending on the 31st day of December 2024, HB 1610, be read the second time. The House also adopted the recommendations of its committee on NDDC for the approval of 1.91 trillion naira as the Commission's 2024 budget. The statutory revenue fund of the Niger Delta Development Commission to the sum of 1 trillion 911 billion 800 million naira only at the sum of 835 billion 222 million 500 and 69,924 Naira only is for development projects. From the amount, 38.5 billion Naira is for personnel expenditure, 29.2 billion Naira for overhead, 8.78 billion Naira goes to development projects, while 1 trillion Naira is for legacy projects to be funded through borrowing for the year ending 38 April 2025. We'll take a quick break, and when we return, I will introduce my guest. Thank you for staying with us on the Hallow Chambers. And my guest today is a member of the House of Representatives. His name is Honorable Billy Osawaru, and he represents Orion Wode Federal Constituency of Edo State. Thank you for joining us on the Hallow Chambers today. Thank you for having me. All right. Um, looking at the current situation in the country and the hardship Nigerians face, you know, the House of Representative members have taken a bold step in slashing their, you know, monthly allowance by half. How far reaching is this going to be in solving the challenge Nigerians face now? Well, it's a good, way, it's a good place to start from. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, something is always better than nothing. This is just a demonstration for the Nigerian people to understand as the people's representatives. We have always been there for them. Uh, this time we see, you know, how things are going in the country. And we just felt it's always good to go out there, see what we can do. And I believe with this gesture at all, uh, other corporate bodies and even uh, uh, government establishments uh, will begin to look at this as something they need to emulate. Uh, whichever way we can help the Nigerian people yeah, is... Is good. So who is going to be tracking this? Who is going to see to the disbursement and ensure that, you know, the money is rich who it's supposed to reach? Well, I'm sure that is going to be designed. The details will be worked out. And uh, as you know, we, we oversight uh, MDA's ministries and, and uh, we're going to oversight ourselves too to make sure, you know, uh, whatever is put out there gets to where it's supposed to get. And is it a one-time one thing? Is it just going to be for Well, I think for, um, for now, I think it's six months, if I'm not right. But whatever I say here, a disclaimer, whatever I say is just my own uh, personal opinion. Uh, I, I don't speak for the House. We have a spokesman, so I just wanted to put that out. So I think, uh, yes, from what I know so far, it's going to be at least for the first six months. And what other palliative measures should we expect from the House of Representatives in this uh, 
regard, aside, you know, slashing the salaries? Well, as you are aware, uh, 2024 uh, ZIP project has not been funded and uh, capital project as well. And uh, lately, uh, the presidency, you know, has moved uh, to see that uh, those projects are funded. And we know when those projects are funded, I think uh, that will bring succor to our people because, uh, as you well know, 360 members representing, you know, uh, federal constituencies, we, that is Nigeria for you. So once these projects are funded, I think a lot of... Uh, so-called will come to our people. So these, uh, of course, you know the ZIP program uh, projects, uh, some of them come in form of uh, palliative food and other income generating projects. So it's going to be a lot of help. And uh, we want to actually thank uh, Mr. President, you know, for listening. Yes, even though uh, those uh, projects have not been funded till now, but recently we've just been uh, told that those projects have been made priority to see that those things get to our people. All right, uh, moving on. Uh, the bill for a single-term presidency and governorship has passed first reading in the House of Representatives. Do you think Nigerians will welcome this um, development? Well, I guess it's still a working process. So it's just first reading. So I, I think the awareness has been brought now uh, to the Nigerian people. So it's not left for you know, everyone to go out there, do their own homework and really see if this is something that's going to work for them. As you well know, uh, people will bring these things on board. And this left for the Nigerian people during the open hearing to come actually share their own opinion or what they feel about it. Would this make um, government officials sit up in the sense? What's, what's the motive behind this bill, if I may ask? Well, I, I was not the mover of the bill. But you should I, be able yes, to be exposed to yeah. some of the contents yes, of this Yes, bill. from from what we know uh, from the explanation of a single term presidency. Well, uh, it would take, uh, it has its good and bad. Uh, if you ask me, of course, it has its good because if you have a single uh, presidency, uh, I think that uh, issue of going for a second term, you know, uh, will be out of, you know, the, you know, the table at that time. So when you know you have one single term presidency, you want to start from day one, you hit the ground running because you only have that period to actually deliver for your people and leave a legacy behind. You know? But again, uh, if somebody knows that, well, I only have a single term presidency, there's no time people will have a review of my first term, then they can as well come to and do whatever they want to do and get out of there because knowing that they don't have to account to anybody, it's just one term, they've gotten it, they can do whatever they like. So you look at that merit and demerit, and those are the things Nigerians should consider, you know, when looking at this bill. You co-sponsored a motion charging the Joint Investigative Committee on Petroleum, downstream and midstream petroleum resources to, you know, conduct a probe to unravel the situation behind the abnormalities in the petroleum sector. How far-reaching do you think this probe is going to be? Well, I think... Uh, it passed, you know, uh, the motion was carried by majority of the members, if not all. And because of the popularity of that motion, I can tell you that we are beginning to look, you know, for these problems. Because if we don't know the problems, we will not find, we won't be able to find solutions to these problems. So if you take a look, a critical look at that motion, you know, with that forensic investigation, it's going to take care of a lot of those issues we'll be having. So many Nigerians have been screaming, why are we having these kind of issues? You know, and we know how important the oil sector is to the Nigerian economy. So, but we've not been looking at these problems, you know, holistically. So that motion is going to address this. By the time we are done with our forensic investigation, I'm sure with all the information we'll be getting out of there, we can make informed decisions. But this is not the first time, you know, the House or the National Assembly in general will be investigating such matters. What will make this different this time around? Because this is 10th Assembly. <laughs> that... <laughs> 10th Assembly, with, yes, is the most colorful assembly okay. in the history of Nigerian Parliament. We have about 10 different political parties. And we work as a family. Like I said, for a better Nigeria, 
why a lot of us came on board if you look at how we came you will understand that we came on board because we wanted to fix what has been wrong to right all the wrongs in the system so right from the one that we came on board we've been working together as a family so again tent assembly has been making you know a lot of strides in these areas and i think we are going to make a difference because we are so focused on solutions and we are so focused on our legacy at the end of the day. So uh, with this kind of motion, uh, with the way you know, people have been taking it, uh, I see that this is going to make a difference. The implementation of the PIA has been one major factor that you know, some lawmakers have raised. Is this, also, this probe also going to look into that, the implementation of the PIA? Well, I, I don't think we're going to go in detail, but again, as we begin to move on, there might be some reasons why we need to go look at some sessions of that. But again, for right now, just the way the motion stands, we are looking into, you know, the issues, you know, why we are having, you know, these cues, you know, and uh, what is really wrong. You know, the regulatory bodies, are they really doing what they are supposed to be doing? You know, so we are looking at all this. But again, as the investigation goes on, maybe we might have a need to look at that direction. But if it comes up, yes, so be it. All right, we'll still have a lot to discuss, but we'll take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We still have more for you on the program. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Glad to have you back. It's still the Hello Chambers. And with me in the studio is Honorable Billy Osawaru. Now, Nigeria now has a new minimum wage. The federal government and labor have been able to come to an agreement on, uh, on 70,000 naira minimum wage. And we expect to see this legislation come before the National Assembly for, um, you know, consideration and, you know, approval. But do you, by any means, see any resistance, maybe from the body language of your colleagues or from other Nigerians, to this current development? Well, so far, uh, as far as uh, I, I don't think and I don't expect that because we are here, you know, we are the people's representative. Whatever we feel will be good for our people. Why do we have to resist it? And, and, and I want to tell you, this has become a priority since yesterday that uh, this agreement, you know, was reached. I, I think uh, the National Assembly is eagerly waiting, you know, to quickly push this. It has become a priority now because anything that will better the lives of Nigerian people is what we stand for. So, again, um, where they are now at, is better than where they used to be. And we are all for it. And how would you say maybe the state gov governors will comply? Because those have been the major factor in this regard. You know, there's no holistic um, full implementation by some state governors. How do you think this is going to check this lapses? Well, I'm sure before they came to this uh, position, the governors would have been carried along because this was not a one-day decision or agreement. So, uh, with, uh, you need to understand something. There's no time we can get all the 36 states governors to agree. But the Nigeria must move forward. And I'm sure by the time this starts, maybe some of those governors, this is actually going to put them on the spot to start looking inward, to see... Apart from what comes from uh, the Federation's uh, account, then what else can they do in form of eternally generated revenue? So, and I'm sure this has become a challenge for the governors as well. So, because there are some states, you know, that are ready to pay even more than this. So, when they are doing that, what does that tell about other states? So, I think it creates some kind of competition for the governors to go back because every governor wants to leave a legacy behind, a good one. You know, so I, I'm sure I'm sure they, they will try their best to comply. Having the power of legislation, would we see on the part of the National Assembly maybe injecting a clause that will mandate compliance? You know, mandate compliance on the part of the governors. Governors, everyone involved. Well, I, I I don't think that is part of our mandate as the National Assembly. That's why they have the state houses of assembly. So, but whatever is within our mandate, we'll take care of. But that of maybe mandating the governors, I'm not sure that's within our mandate to do. 
All right, let's take your view on the assessment of the House of Representatives so far. It's been one year. What's your assessment? Well, I, I will tell you the House of Representatives has been doing very well under the able leadership of our Speaker, Mr. Speaker, uh, Right Honorable Tajuddin Abbas, PhD. Uh, is a man that is uh, always there. He's always been there for us uh, with his leadership team, his deputy speaker, uh, everybody, we've been working as a family. Yes, we've come in, you know, through different vehicles as parties, but one thing we've been able to establish within the past one year is that, you know, uh, 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 family, you know, as one. We've been working together. Yes, we've had our moments where we'll have to get into some very, very hard debates, but the, the truth is, considering the numbers of bills and motions we have moved, then you can really tell that this house is going to be one of the best, you know, by the time we are done in the next three years. So, again, looking at, you know, the kind of the quality of motions and bills that we've been pushing, I have no doubt that in the next three years, Nigerians will be happy with this 10th Assembly. In the last um, one week, um, the House has lost two of its members. How has this impacted on the mood of the House of Representatives? And how would you say your colleagues will be missed? Yeah, it's really be tough uh, for us, and uh, you see, it's it's very tough. Just like you you lose a family member, uh, these are people we used to sit down together to deliberate on motions, on bills. People we used to travel together on oversights, on retreats, but today they are no more. You know, uh, sometimes it's, it actually calls for a sober reflection. You know, we look at what we do today. What legacies do we, do we really want to leave behind? Because every single day counts for us now. You know, because those members are no longer here. But the ones that are still here, every day we give thanks to God. But again, we look at ourselves. I don't know when it's going to be my turn. So let me do what I can do right now. Because when you are not here, what will you be judged by? How will people talk about you? You'll be given this opportunity out of 220 million Nigerians. You are one of the 360, you know, to be in the House of Representatives. You are one of the 109 to be in the Senate. What would you be remembered by? So every single time we sit down and begin to reflect on all this. And again, as lawmakers, we want to do our best. All right. Speaking about doing your best, what impact in terms of legislation and, you know, intervention in your constituency how have your people felt to your your representation you representing them in the national assembly there are three major functions that a lawmaker carries out or is expected to carry out one is you make laws right two is representation and three is oversight yes i can tell you uh well with the number of motions i have moved within the past one year i've had more than 15 motions under my belt 15. yes and are pushing three bills as we speak. And how far so, have they gone? Well, when you move motions, of course, they have a procedure. They usually refer them to the, uh, uh, the committees that are dealing with them. And I can tell you a lot of those things, even with the investigative motions. Some of them are being taken now. Even with the petitions, you know, I've submitted. Some have gone to public petition. You know, some have been laid to rest. And I can tell you when it comes to you know, making laws, my people are very happy with me uh, because if you want to compare, you do a comparative an analysis, you know, with maybe other lawmakers, then you can tell that uh, I'm not doing badly because of the number of motions I've been able to push in the House. But when it comes to representation, of course, this is my first year. This is my first budget. But I've still been able to really go out there to push things out for my people when it comes to it. There are little things you can always do, you know, without you having to wait maybe for your constituency project or your capital project. I've been able to do those things. At least uh, during the dry season, I've been able to go out there, you know, with, uh, with some uh, equipment to see how we can run some roads, you know, even if you're not going to tar roads for your people, but you should still be able to grade roads for your people. I've been able to do that. I've been able to push out some solar lights out there for our people. I've been able to go on, you know, some few medical outreach, you know, distribute some educational materials. Those are little things we can actually do while we are waiting, 
you know, for our zona intervention projects to kick off. Those things I have done. Then over, oversight, of course. Uh, we usually don't stay in Abuja from Thursday to Monday. We are mostly out on oversight because when you are doing oversight, you are not doing oversight only in, in the capital city. You are always out there. So there is barely a week that we don't go out there. You know, tomorrow we are out again to you. You know, from there we are going to Port Harcourt on oversight. Every single committee that I belong to, I participate actively. And this participation, of course, involves oversight, retreat, because this tent assembly, one good thing our honorable speaker has put down is to make sure that every committee goes on a retreat. When you go on a retreat, the retreat is where you actually sit down with the stakeholders, you know, to really know, get informed decision on what you are supposed to be doing when it comes to the agencies, you know, the NDAs, or ministries that you oversight. So we have taken that so seriously because we believe if you don't have enough information, then you cannot make informed decisions. So we've been going on a lot of retreats. So every single committee I belong to, we have always, I've always participated. So if you assess me based on those three, then you will see that I'm not doing bad.